All right, so previously we had Jason on the Four Lifters, Buy Lifters podcast on episode four. Uh, Jason's an IFBB pro bodybuilder. He's done all the big competitions out there, and he's been doing this for a long time. So we're going to go over what is now considered the bro diet, but back in the day it was called the pro diet. So we're going to discuss dieting, uh, a lean bulk, and then an all-out bulk for putting muscle on. We are going to build a bro diet or a pro diet for about a 180 pound male and we'll do like a natural athlete. Yeah, we'll do a natural and athlete, your garden variety diet to help you guys uh, build muscle, put on quality muscle while minimizing body fat or not putting on a body fat um, to, to help you, you know, achieve some uh, some success in the gym and, and acquired a, uh, you know, acquired a desired look, right? They're looking to, yeah. to get bigger. Don't put, on, don't put on much body fat and, and, uh, and stay lean. So back in your day, it was the pro diet. Now it's the bro diet. Well, it's weird. It was just a diet. It was just, <laughs> this is how you eat. You know, it was really wasn't categorized as a bro or a pro or, you know, as things evolve and you learn your body, things, things you know, you increase certain substances and, 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 and calories and so forth. But there was just a general, just a general overall, overall synopsis of uh, this is what you could do, this is what you don't do. You know, there was taboos and there was things, uh, things that were you know frowned upon and, and things that were encouraged. When uh, when I was a kid, I read an article and it said uh, eat like an adult, right? right? And it was basically eat real food, yeah. eat you know cook all your food, yeah. And uh, and it completely changed my physique once I cut out all the processed stuff. Sure. And uh, that was probably the leanest I was when I was doing bodybuilding prior to powerlifting. Right. So, all right. So uh, start with meal one. Sure. And so we're doing. Now again, just because you're 180 pounds, everybody's uh, basic metabolic uh, system is different. You know, somebody could be 180 pounds and get away with eating 4,000 calories a day. There's some people that are 180 pounds and, and 2,000 calories a day is enough for them. So we're gonna give you an overall idea of, of how to break things up. Mostly they would be changing their energy sources, yeah. not necessarily the protein content. Right? Yeah, so what I like to do is you find a base structure based upon whatever their, their metabolic rate is. So if you're, I have everybody normally write down what they do first. I analyze a calorie structure and I restructure the meal plan designed for them. If they're used to taking in 3,500 calories a day and these are the sources of, 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 of their foods, um, we take the calorie structure, create a, a higher protein, moderate carbohydrate, lower fat diet, and just restructure the foods with the same calorie structure. This way their body doesn't go into shock where, hey, if we're used to taking in 5,000 calories a day, now we cut them down to 2,500, it's, it's gonna be a rough, it's gonna be a toll on the body. Do you, uh, with all the intermittent fasting stuff, do you, do you believe in <laughs> breakfast? I believe in, I believe in eating throughout the day, yes. All right, so we'll do uh, breakfast here. So five to six meals, um, preferably six on training days. You could do five on non-training days, but maybe a little bit of a higher calorie uh, meal consumption if you're cutting out if you're cutting out that six meal because um, I like to do a post workout shake just to get the nutrients in just for optimal uh, you know op optimal replenishment of protein and carbohydrates. So for this model, can most people lift at night? I know you you're a morning guy. I'm a morning guy. But most people do lift at night. So can we structure this sure. for nighttime training? Yeah. All right. So what are they eating for breakfast? Uh, so for breakfast, I like to get something new quick. Um, so I'll do a, a protein shake uh, anywhere between 50 grams of uh, I think 50 grams of whey isolate with uh, a, a slow digesting carbohydrate. Uh, oatmeal is a good source. So I'll How do, much? I think three quarters of a cup to a cup of oatmeal. Dry? Dry. Let's do a cup of oats. So we're talking almost 50 grams of carbohydrates. Uh, I like to add fiber in there. Um, so a scoop of fiber, like a psyllium husk, or if you could find a uh, soluble and insoluble fiber blend, I, I recommend that. Raisin bran doesn't count? Raisin bran does not count. Um, we're gonna go with real foods here. So that would be a typical breakfast. Um, I, I add in a tablespoon of honey, um, but for somebody who's training later on at night, we could, we could just stick to the oats and the fiber. So this is a good, well-balanced uh, meal for your first meal. You're getting 50 grams of whey, you're getting about 50 grams of oatmeal. Um, you know, there's low fats in both of these, so you're not, you're not acquiring a lot of fats as soon as you wake up. The scoop of fiber is gonna, the fiber is gonna help your digestive tract help you assimilate these nutrients uh, in, a, in a good way. 
this would roughly be about three hours later. If you get hungry because the, <coughs> excuse me, the shake is a pre-digested meal, so that could hit you a little quicker. So a meal two, you can do anywhere between two and a half to three hours later. I would do uh, six to eight ounces based upon your body weight. So for a 180 pound guy, uh, six ounces should be fine, six, seven ounces. I would do a grilled chicken with, uh, are we going clean here for, for somebody or are we doing? Uh, I mean, if they're doing kind of like a lean bulk, right? A lean, okay, so yeah. I could do, we could do a cup and a half of rice. We could do white rice. So you're getting 60 grams of carbohydrates there. About 42 to 45 grams of, of protein. And with this, you could do vegetables, or you could even, uh, well, we'll just keep the carbs the same here. We could add some fats in later on. <coughs> you wanna add veggies in here though, for digestion? Yes. Mixed veggies. <coughs> That'll do it for meal two. So meal three, about three hours later. When, where are they gonna be training? Uh, so meal, meal one is roughly around, what, seven o'clock? 7 a.m. Yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10. You know, so we're now talking 11-ish. 11-ish, so we're talking around 1 o'clock. Yeah. Um, so probably one more. Then, then, you, then you'll have a yeah train and then a post. Okay. So uh, for meal three, we could do a beef meal. So we could do six to eight ounce of steak, of a lean steak. We could switch over to a slow digesting carbohydrate, like a yam, sweet potato, or some brown rice. So we're gonna go to uh, another cup and a half or eight ounces of, uh, of a sweet potato. Veggies again. So with this, we're ha we, have, we already have about 170 grams of carbohydrates in here, and we're, we're, we're at almost 150 grams of protein. So for meal four, we could, uh, we could incorporate a little bit of uh, a cleaner fat. So we'll do meal four with uh, grilled chicken again, six to eight ounces. We could do a slow digesting carbohydrate, but a lesser amount. So we could do about a cup of brown rice. And we could add a half a tablespoon of, of, a, of an oil, like a clean oil, like an MCT oil. We could do olive oil. We could do macadamia nut oil. Any of those are fine. And then we have, uh, then we would train, right? So train, you can do your pre-workout if you're doing a high stim or a moderate stim or non-stim or a pump or the forge pump pre-workout, obviously. You gotta plug it. You gotta plug that. And train, I always like the intros. I use the rehab. I know people have their own choice, but it's a, it's a low glycemic index carbohydrate in there with your branch chain and essentials. It'll take you through the workout. Some guys like to do higher carbs during their workout. With this meal plan, you don't require that, but I would recommend adding the carbs post-workout. That will be your post-workout shake. So training with your rehab and then meal five would be something instantaneous, another 50 grams of whey isolate. And I would add a like 50, 40, 50 grams of a cluster dextrin or a cyclic dextrin carbohydrate and a banana. So you're adding like another 75 grams of carbs post-workout to get that in you instantaneously, re replenish that glycogen, get you fueled up for the next day. And then meal six would be uh, preferably before bed. And with this, we can go higher fats, so your body could break them down overnight and you don't tap into the glycogen that you've been storing and you restore post-workout. Post so you could, do, you could do six ounces of steak with uh, two whole eggs. You can make like a steak and egg omelet. If you'd like to put uh, one or two slices of Ezekiel bread in there also, um, or you could do a, uh, some more oatmeal, a slow digesting carbohydrate, and I would add one to two tablespoons of, uh, of a natural peanut butter. So you're getting a good balanced meal with some fats, proteins, and carbohydrates before bed. How much oatmeal? Uh, I would go a half a cup. You don't need go. something, you don't need to go too heavy here. About 30 grams of carbs, and you're getting about 14 uh, grams of fat from the, from the natural peanut butter and the eggs. All right, so can we dissect it a little bit? Sure. All right, so why would you do white rice here further away from training and then a lower glycemic rice as you get closer? Right, okay, so when you get up in the morning, your blood sugar's low, you're in a state of hypoglycemia, but I recommend doing so you don't get a crazy insulin spike. I like getting a slow-release carbohydrate in your first, okay. so it gives your body a chance to start making some insulin, producing some insulin for later on. I go with a higher glycemic index uh, white rice there, so your body does release insulin, so you pull that in. 
then you want to break that down. You don't want heavy insulin before your training. So I like using slower release carbohydrates before you before you train to uh, to prevent an insulin spike, which could make you lethargic or a little tired during your training. Okay, because a lot of people are doing like candy pre workout. Yeah. It just didn't work for you. you well, don't. sugar sugar um, does not get converted to glycogen, so I really don't encourage or like using any types of real sugars. Okay. Um, just because it's going to release insulin, um, any fats that are in your system, it's going to pull them into the, into the cell, so you, you can get fat storage from that also. So you want to be careful with that. But you want to you want to alleviate, you want to minimize insulin, you know, during your training time. Okay. Um, it can make you lethargic. It can make you tired. You know, you could you get a little insulin spike if you're adding the cluster dextrin post workout, but that's really to shuttle the nutrients in. And you won't. You and won't it can get, be beneficial here. It can be beneficial post workout, not not before. Okay. Loading up on sugar before you work out. It's like loading up before you have a football game or a wrestle night. It's gonna make you tired. You're gonna crash. Is that why the oils here as well to provide a little bit of energy, but yes. also slow down the slow down, rise? Yes, exactly. Okay. Get a little more of a balance there. And that'll slow down the, the, the breakdown of glycogen so you could utilize it during your training. And uh, you have your intro workout to, to balance any of that out also. And then you have your recovery meal five and meal six. So I feel like these three are pretty easy to plan. Yes. But let's say you know you leave work you know between meal three and meal four right. and you get stuck in traffic. Right. You, know, you gotta meet your training partner at XYZ time. Uh, is there a substitute for something like this prior to training? Yeah, I mean, is there you, anything could, on the you, go? you could switch any of these protein sources. You can get a bag of tuna. You can get, you know, now you can get steamed rice from a Chinese restaurant. You can get steamed chicken from a Chinese restaurant. Um, they have those prep meals also. They, they, there are a lot of options nowadays that there weren't in my time. You had to pack this all day. You're doing your meal prep the night before. And you're bringing food on the road with you. Um, so you have a cooler stack with, with food for the day. Nowadays, it's a little easier, so people shouldn't have as much trouble. If you do get to a jam, like I said, you can get grilled chicken anywhere, you can get brown rice anywhere. Um, oil, you know, you can always bring that with you too. It's, 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 uh... So you would rather find something on the go than to supplement this meal? Well, you can supplement it with, with a chicken, I'm sorry, with, but if you're supplemented, then you, you, you could have brought that also. You know, if you grab a bag of tuna... I'm saying if you're on the go, could you replace this chicken with additional whey? Could you, oh, use, like a, could you use like a cyclic dextrin if you didn't have anything, um, you know, to mix it in? Look, you know, if you're in a jam, you, you, you're better off having the calories and not having them. If you could stick to the meals, even better. But if you, like I said, if you're in a gym, you have to have a sh uh, shake. I would cut down on the cyclic dextrin uh, prior to the training because you might get an insulin spike from that also, so you could do with half the dose. But you do want to get something in it. You do need, you do, you do need the calories. Cool. You want to reverse it? Do a 200 pound male uh, dieting? Ooh, sure. Right? So it'll change a little bit, right? Yeah, a little bit. If the dieting? Look at that fancy thing. Look at that. Okay, so if you're looking to get in shape, you have a competition coming, you just want to look good for, for the ladies or your wife or whatever whatever your fancy is, um, I would recommend a similar diet structure. Um, obviously, we're going to uh, incorporate some cardio in this meal plan, um, and we're going to have timing. The timing of carbohydrates is, is going to change. So most of, most of your carbohydrates are going to be consumed in the morning. Um, I like to back off carbs uh, the later half of the day, which makes it difficult if you are training at night. So if you could any, by any means, if you can get to the gym in the morning, get your training in, uh, it, it, it helps the dieting plan because what you could do is you can get your training done in the morning, you could replenish your glycogen storages, and then you can go low carbs or no carbs, almost like an intermittent, fa intermittent fasting, just with carbohydrates though, right. for 12 hours out of the day which does make a big difference when you're looking to burn body fat and get rid of body fat. So it's something like this, if there's any way to switch your, are we gonna switch the training time or no? Are we gonna take the training time? Most people work for a living. They do, they can wake <laughs> up early. Um, so gym's open at four, right? So what they can do is we'll stick to meal one, we'll do a uh, pre-digested protein. We'll do 50 grams, 55 grams of a whey isolate. We'll do uh, three quarters of a cup of oatmeal with the fiber. We are gonna cut out the high glycemic index carbohydrates and we're just gonna do slow release carbohydrates. So meal two would be eight ounces 
of grilled chicken with uh, one cup of brown rice and veggies. Meal three, we're gonna switch over to a fish protein source. We'll do eight to nine ounces of grilled fish. That's real fish, not tuna? Not tuna. Well, they could use tuna or Tuna's tuna okay. can. Yeah. So I would recommend like a can and a half. Can and a half. Yeah, so you wanna get about 50 to 55 grams of protein with that meal. Um, you could either do brown rice again, Fish goes better with brown rice, I believe, and, and uh, yeah, one cup of brown rice. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we're gonna do more veggies here. Meal four, we're gonna go back to eight ounces of grilled chicken. You're gonna do a four ounce yam or sweet potato. Meal five, you're gonna train. You get up your rehab intro, it's low enough in carbs. Meal five is gonna be your shake again. I would go 60 grams of whey isolate with uh, 25 grams of a cyclodextrin or carb 10. And meal six is gonna be eight ounces, eight to 10 ounces of, uh, of steak and two tablespoons of peanut butter. So with this meal plan, we are cutting a little calories and fat from meal six. We're dropping the carbs from meal five instead of 75, we're cutting down to, to 25. We're cutting the fat out of meal four and utilizing just four ounces of the yam, which is, which is half the dose. And uh, everything is relatively the same, but we're going more eight or nine ounces instead of six to eight for a higher, a higher mass uh, meal that's getting ready for a show. Um, with this, you wanna do your cardio post-training or if you could do it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, it would be even better. But this will, this will get you in shape. Um, you can always clean this up and balance things out, see, it, see how your body responds the first couple weeks. If you need to, uh, Increase protein calories if you're losing weight too fast. You that's always the first idea. Um, if that's not enough, you could always increase the fat calories um, from meal six, or you could increase slightly the carb calories in the lower portion of your day because you still want to create that window of at least you know 12 hours of fasting from carbohydrates overnight. This way, you wake up with a low blood sugar level. You could actually get in, get on the cardio if you're doing it first thing in the morning, and uh, optimize from uh, from from back fat burning effects. So something like this will be good for somebody natural or enhanced. Or they enhanced. can kind of yes. use this as a baseline. This is pretty similar to what I did, except my training time was earlier. So it was after meal one. So this meal was meal two and these just went down one. So somebody could easily make the argument that this is still a macro based meal, right? Because all of these carry macronutrients. So yes. it provides a platform. So, you so what I do primarily is I do more of a carbohydrate and protein based diet with fats. Of course, they're gonna have a calorie structure tied into it, but I'm not, I'm not really fixated on the calorie structure because every body is different. You know, I can't say that, all right, I, I, I need 4,000 calories a day or I lose weight or I gain weight from 4,000. You don't know because any day your body is different. Um, during the dieting, your metabolism could increase at the end. It could be sluggish in the beginning. There, there's so many changes. There's so many variables that take, take place that just sticking to a macro diet, which I'm sorry, you're gonna have food allergies. You're gonna, you can't eat cake. You, know, you can't eat a certain amount of carbohydrates. Yeah, you can't do these things. Um, some people can get away with it. They're genetically blessed, but you're gonna hit a wall or if you're looking to take it uh, slightly, you know, uh, slightly in a, in, a, in a better direction, you have to cut those things out. You know, fat cells, they do have memory. You know, when you suffocate these fat cells and don't give them carbohydrates and don't give them fats for an extended period of time, they start shrinking. You know, if you start shrinking your fat cells and you have these cheat diets and these cheat days and these refeeds, these cells are coming back to life. So you never get that super hard, dry look that a guy that's been starving those cells for extended periods of time get. So since you brought that up, when would you implement a cheat meal? So I wouldn't implement a cheat meal until somebody really needs one. It shouldn't be part, you should have a cheat meal as part of your plan. You know, you should be, a cheat meal should be strategy if your body's coming down too fast. And if, and if you get a little sluggish, you need some extra calories. Go out, have a meal, enjoy yourself, um, and, and we start fresh tomorrow. That's if somebody's starting to, where you're, where you're worried about burning muscle. Sometimes your system gets so enhanced just from dieting so clean that now you start burning everything. So you do need to get some stuff in there some, with some stuff, uh, substance that you could burn, you know, for- To slow the body down, just to, to yeah. get it to pump the brakes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
once that roller coaster starts going, you know, it's going up struggling, and once it starts moving, dude, you can take your hands off the wheel and you're gonna fly. So sometimes you need a little bump in the road just to slow it down. Now the increase in protein content for a dieting meal is because we've dropped carbohydrates, which are protein sparing, and now we need to increase the protein to reduce muscle wasting? So we need calories from something. So I've, protein is a much harder time converting to, to body fat than fats or carbohydrates. Actually, carbohydrates are easier to convert to, to body fat than, than fats are. Right. Um, if carbohydrates, especially sugar-based carbohydrates, if they're not utilized in a certain time frame, they get stored in your liver, it gets pushed right into the fat cells. So um, that's not always your best source of increasing calories. You always want to struck, you always want to do it with protein first. If that's not enough, then you could slowly increase from carbohydrates. Or if you're carb sensitive, and you know you're carb sensitive, you can increase it from the fats. But you have to get a gauge on things. You know, you can't really, the rule book has to be out the window. There's no rules. Everybody's, like I said, everybody's different. This is according to how you respond. So, you know, some people might respond better to fats. Some people don't respond well to carbohydrates at all. I think a lot of this would depend on, you know, prior to starting it, right? How much food they're eating, yes. you know, where they're at, how much muscle's on their frame, how tall. The what their calorie structure's like. Right. You know, if they're eating 4,000 calories a day, 5,000 calories a day, and it's all shit. You know, just by giving them the same calorie structure with clean food, they're going to get great results. Right. Then at some point, you are going to have to drop their calories. But you take it in stride. You can't just drop your calories all at once because their body's used to being up here and now you're cut, they go into a starvation mode. Well, they start burning protein. When you have somebody, let's say you have two different people that, uh, you know, that are dieting. One guy likes to train a lot of volume. One guy likes to train you know, real heavy, real intense. Uh, does that determine the type of, the amount of food that they're bringing? So in? if you're dieting for a show, um, you're preparing for a show, you, know, you should be training hard regardless. Um, but you don't need to be in there for two hours a day. If people use more volume, obviously they're gonna burn more calories. You, know, you, you could adapt it to that based upon the training style. But that, you really want to adapt the training style to the diet. Because at this point, when you're dieting for a show, you're not going to really build muscle. You're trying to preserve it. You know, you're building muscle is more for the off season when you're in a calorie surplus. You can get away with eating certain, these certain foods. Now you're incorporating cardio. You're incorporating uh, carb restriction. You're incorporating calorie restriction. Your body's going to start. You need to hold on to muscle as much as possible. So overtraining isn't the best thing. Right. Some people overtrain because they're they're late in the game and they need another alternative to burn calories. That's a, that's a totally different philosophy. But if you're doing it properly, and you're training properly and eating right, this is the, this is the, least, this is the path with the, the least resistance to get where you want to go. And I don't mean le least resistance where it's not hard work. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the, the smartest option. Cool. You want to do an all out bulk? Yeah. We need another board. All right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, okay, so an all out bulk. So for this, I don't get excited. You know, don't. This is not what you think. You know, it's not going to be. It's not candy. McDonald's every day. It's not McDonald's <laughs> and candy. This is. Look, if you want, if you want to put on quality muscle, you got to get quality food. You know, so if you're talking about a bulk, we're going to give you a, an excessive calorie-based diet um, with proper protein requirements. I always say, and I, I hate saying this, um, but I, I do believe it. Carbo carbohydrates aren't essential for growth. They're essential to spare protein breakdown. Um, and to utilize as another calorie source in your diet, because obviously you don't want to go too heavy on, on protein. You need other calories there. But pro the primary base, the, the, most of your calorie base should be coming from quality protein. If you're eating a meal, I prefer you, and you're getting full, I prefer you to finish your protein first. If you don't eat your carbohydrates, who gives a shit? You don't, right. you don't need them. You're getting enough throughout the day. Eat the essential stuff eat first. Eat the essential stuff first. And protein is essential. You know, carbohydrates, Fats are actually more essential than carbohydrates. You do need a base amount of carbohydrates for basic metabolic function, brain function, activity, but believe it or not, it's actually more minimal than, than people believe. And I've tested myself on this, so I, I, I know it to be true. But in all that bulk, you are gonna have a variety of well-balanced uh, well balanced diet with proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. I don't really have a set ratio, but meal one, we could do, uh, we'll, go, we'll go eggs, because I know uh, we just talked about that. So why don't we do 10 to 12 egg whites with, uh, we'll do four yolks. So you're getting four whole eggs and eight extra egg whites in here. We're gonna do a cup of oatmeal and a banana or another good source of fruit that you like. I like bananas. All right, 
So we have fat sources in there, we have protein sources, and we have slow and fast release carbohydrate sources in there. Okay, that's as soon as you wake up. So meal two, we're gonna do 10 ounces of chicken. We're gonna do two cups of white or brown rice. Let's do white rice. And we're gonna do a tablespoon of fat. You could do olive oil, um, I guess the macadamia nut oil, MCT oil, whatever you prefer. So meal three, we're gonna do 10 ounces of steak. Everybody's favorite. We're gonna do two cups, or you know, let's give you a, let's do an eight to 10 ounce potato. We give you some veggies in here, just uh, for nostalgic reasons. And another tablespoon of, uh, of oil. So if you wanna marinate the steak in a little oil, that could be the source. If you wanna uh, put it on top when you're done, if you want to have a salad and put the oil on top, that's another option. Uh, meal four, we're going to do another 10 ounces of chicken. We're going to go veggies. And we're going to do a tablespoon of oil. I'm going to cut the carbs out of meal four just because it's prior to training. And this is a much heavy calorie-based diet. I don't want you sluggish for your workout. So meal five, we're going to train. We're going to do a scoop and a half of rehab. And meal five, oh, meal five would be here. We're gonna go back to our, our whey shake um, just to get a instantaneous refeed. This is your reef, this is a real refeed. Okay. So we're gonna, let's do 60 grams of fast digesting uh, whey protein. You could switch it with an egg whey protein if you want. Same bioavailability. We're gonna go 50 grams of uh, carb powder. We're gonna do uh, one banana and we're gonna add to this, you're gonna blend this up. We're gonna add a half a cup of oatmeal to this also. So we're getting a blend of quick release carbohydrates and slow release carbohydrates in this as well. We're not going to add fats to meal five because we don't want to delay uh, the interaction. We want to keep this fast acting where if you add fats it could slow down the release. You also don't want to add fiber to meal five. Just uh, just keep it in the, in the first meal. We don't even have it here. We'll do meal six. All right, so you can actually add a scoop of fiber in meal one. I forgot to do that. My apologies. Just better for digestion, good for overall health, good for absorption. So meal six, um, we're gonna go back to our steak meal. This is gonna be before bed, so it is a heavier meal, but I'm sure you, you won't mind with uh, 10 ounces of steak. We could do a, uh, a six ounce sweet potato, two tablespoons of peanut butter. Natural peanut butter, not that skippy crap. So with this, it's a good, well-balanced meal uh, meal plan for if you're looking to put some put some muscle on, uh, minimal body fat. Um, you will be a little fuller. You you will have some water retention, but you should not get fat off this diet. Uh, strength should should not be a problem. Um, you might want to incorporate um, this. I don't mind if you want to incorporate a cheat meal. You know, once a week. Where are you putting it? I usually do it on a Saturday, just because. Uh, like an off day. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I was training on Saturdays, but I always, I always set my diets up because the competitions were always on Saturday. So if my, if I cheat meal was my last one was three weeks away from a show, it's on that Saturday three weeks to flush that crap out of me. Okay. So I, I always do it accordingly. But you could, anybody could do it any day they desire. Are you doing it like if you were having this meal plan? Would this <laughs> be where your cheat meal is? So primarily, I would have my cheat meal um, if you're training at night. See, I was training in the morning, so mine was a little different structured, I would have it meal five. Because if I have it too early in the day, it just destroys you and you really don't even want to eat the rest of the day. So yeah, you can actually get this meal in you and you can have it meal six, or if you do it on an off day of training, you can do it meal five, and then and keep your meal six the same. All right. So let's say uh, somebody's doing this for a couple weeks and you know they're, they're gaining some weight, but they're not gaining any body fat, they're in pretty good shape, um, but they're hungry. You know, th this is the base amount of meals that they're eating and, and the amount of food. Are they able to start increasing, you know, carb sources, protein sources? So, I mean, this is a lot of food. You know, so you're, you're talking uh, almost 400 grams of protein here. And you're talking about, uh, so you're talking almost 400 grams of protein here, almost 400, a little under 400 grams of, of carbohydrates also. And you, and you have a decent amount of fat. So you have 15, about 100 grams. 85 grams of fat. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, if they're hungry on top of this, I would, you could increase the protein uh, first and foremost. Um, that should slow them down a little bit because that's, that's harder to digest than a carbohydrate or, or, a, or a fat. Because um, these are clean fats, so they, they do digest much easier than a trans fat or a fried food or, you know. Um, you can always increase the protein source. They can go to, if they're doing 10 ounces, they can go to 12 ounces of chicken or steak. Um, if they want to slightly increase the carbohydrates, they could do that as well. But this, this should keep people uh, pretty full. I mean, this is a good, you know, for, for 100, if they were 250 pounds, I get it. But yeah. for a 180 pound guy, this is, this is a lot of food. Right. Um, you know, if, if they're still hungry after that, maybe they, you know, they're dealing with some emotional, they might be emotional eaters. They're emotional eaters, they need to see someone about that. No, but uh, if they are hungry, they can increase the protein sources, but this should be enough for them. What about the criteria for somebody to be 180 pounds and want to do an all-out bulk? Okay. Criteria in terms of? Like, what, what should they be looking at? Like, how, how do you know that somebody should pick the all-out bulk versus the lean bulk? And versus bulking at all. Well, that's all preference, you know. So if you're if you're if you're a beginner, um, you really need to put on muscle. It's much harder to try to do a. There's no real lean bulk, you know. Can you gain muscle on a calorie restricted diet? Sure you can. Uh, is it harder? Yeah, it's harder. But it, it, of course it's possible. If you're a beginner um, and and your main goal. But this isn't something that's going to get you fat. You're not going to get flat, you know, sloppy fat and, and look like a sumo wrestler, you know, and put on a little muscle underneath. Like these, are, these are clean, quality foods. Right. So this will this will put some muscle on you while minimizing body fat. If, if that's a little too much, and you're one of those guys who just wants to look good for the summer, and you want to do a, a cleaner version of a, of a muscle gaining diet, you could do the one we did prior to this where it's uh, you know, a little less protein, a little less carbohydrates, a little less fat. Um, that'll work for them if you're looking to, a, if you want to call it a leaner bulk. And then you have the dieting one for guys who are looking to maintain muscle. And, and it is possible to put on muscle during that process also, because if, if, you're, if you remember what we were talking about before, some guys aren't even used to eating quality food six meals a day. They're used to eating crap. I have a guy that I'm working with in Ohio, and he was doing you know a couple cheat meals a day and this and that. He a started you know, like once a day or once every two or three days. But once we cleaned up his diet, he was losing weight doing the cheat meals. He actually started gaining weight eating the cleaner foods, cleaner quality foods, because your body assimilates them better. You know this this will get assimilated properly. Um, this will get utilized properly, and, and, and it's like I said, it's going where it needs to go. Um, extra calories on top of this, if you need it, okay, you know, you can work with that also. But like I said, there's no rules. If you need it, you do it. Right. Um, but of course, if you're, if you're, I put on muscle all the way up to the show also, you know, because I, it's just better quality foods. So you, you learn. Um, if you start out with an all out bulk and they want to get a little leaner, cut the carbs out of the last meal, cut down on fats a little bit and take it from there. You know, if the, if the lean bulk, you're getting too lean, you can increase your calorie. See, what this does for you, it really allows you to learn your body. And that's why I like doing a high protein, moderate carbohydrate, lower fat diet, because you can learn from there. You know, if, if you need more carbohydrates and you respond well to them, you can always add them in. If, even if a moderate carbohydrate diet is too much, you can cut them down out. You can cut them down and actually either increase the fats or increase the protein sources. So this really allows you to find out what works well for you, and then you structure it accordingly. What about off days? Same thing? So off days, obviously, you're not going to have the training, the meal, the meal six. What you can do is you could incorporate a, a, a lower calorie, lower, I'm sorry, lower carbohydrate meal here. Uh, if, especially if you're in a bulking stage, you want to keep your calorie structure similar. So you could do you know, something lighter, because um, you could do an egg white meal here, or something similar to, to meal one without the banana. Um, you could do eggs. You can make a uh, you can make an omelet at night. Put a little put a cup of rice into it, something like that. But if you're training four or five days a week, this will be a primary uh, uh, look of what you're what you're doing uh, four or five days out of the week. Those extra two days, you could just like I said, replace meal five, make an egg omelet, add some rice into it, and call it a day.